So today I'm at Piper Park in Battle Creek, Michigan, and I thought it would be interesting to do a history video on the background of this park and perhaps do other parks in the city and give you some history of how these parks came into be in our community and who were some of the parks named after. Obviously, the Piper Park was named after the Piper family. Well, who were they? And what was the area like before it was developed and as we know it today? So that's what we're going to get into today. So come along and join me. In 1864, Edward Piper Sr. arrived in Battle Creek and purchased land between the village of Verona and the village of Battle Creek, bordering on both sides of Maple Street, which is now Capitol Avenue Northeast. He purchased 160 acres with his wife, Lucinda, and his son, Edward Jr., and his four daughters. Initially, the land was used for farming, and the farmhouse where Edward Piper lived was located at approximately between Riverview Avenue and East Avenue South, just south of Capitol Avenue on the present day map. You can see here in comparison. Also, please note this big circular area on the land just north of Capitol Avenue, which was actually a pond, and that's gonna play an important role later in this story about the history of Piper Park. The land was not just used for farming. Over the years that Piper owned the property, he sold off many lots for income and to provide land for housing in the area, uh, which was becoming a growing community. In 1893, he took four acres of his property and built a baseball field and leased it to a Battle Creek baseball club for three years. An article in a newspaper from April 7th, 1893 describes the location as one of the best in the city. The lay of the land is just right for the making of good ball grounds. The field can be used for field games and all kinds of athletic sports, and it was located on the line of the Electric Street Railway for easy access. If you look at the 1894 atlas from the area, you can see the ball field is clearly indicated as a recreation park right on Edward Piper's land. You can also see some of the divided lots, as well as this outline here of the pond that I mentioned earlier. In 1894, Edward Piper and his wife celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary at their home on Maple Street. At the time, Edward Piper was 81 years old and Mrs. Piper was 79 years old. They had been in the city well over 30 years at that point. In February of 1904, Edward Piper Sr. passed away. His obituary promoted his unique record in his family history. He'd been the first death in over 49 years. At the time of his death, he and his wife had been married for 69 years, and they were six months away from celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary. They were the oldest married couple in Calhoun County at the time of his death. His obituary described Mr. Piper was a substantial, honest citizen, and one whose death is not alone a loss to the family, but to the community. It was his pride that in all his record, no person could come forward and say that he had ever been defrauded by Edward Piper. There are few men of whom that record could be said to hold as good as in the case of the deceased. Following his death, his son, Edward Piper Jr., took over his business and controlling interest in the property. He continued selling off lots and developing neighborhoods as he and his father had been doing together before he passed away. In 1913, you see on the Sanborn fire maps the developing neighborhoods in the area, and by 1916, you see the first markings of Piper Park. Edward Piper Jr. donated 20 acres of land to the city of Battle Creek to form Piper Park. Part of that land was eventually subdivided into bungalow lots, which are along Maple Terrace today, and the existing park to date is roughly seven acres. The land for the park which was donated also included the entirety of Piper Pond, which I mentioned earlier. Now, Piper Pond had been used by the community even years before it was donated to the city as a park, primarily for ice skating during the wintertime. In 1915, after the land was donated to the city, 
the commissioner, Ralph Day, submitted requests from landscape architects in Chicago to design not only Piper Park, but also Irving Park and a new Verona Park. A year later in 1916, the city announced a $12,000 budget to be spent on the development of these three parks, Piper Park, Irving Park, and Verona Park. The city would eventually hire Clifton Shepard, a local landscape architect, to design these parks, who would go on to have a profound impact on the city of Battle Creek as we know it today, as he would later go on to also design and develop the Lila Arboretum. Piper Pond had been partially drained, but it was still designed to be kept in the original planning as a park for children to be used for ice skating in the wintertime and for wading in and playing in in the summertime, which seems kind of unusual today when we look back at it, but it was commonplace in the 1900s to the 1920s before public swimming pools became more commonplace. Moving forward to 1919, there's an article about the mayor of Battle Creek seeing to it that the skating rinks were iced for the winter and later on in the same year, there is a sewer work beginning to be done at the Piper Park to drain some of the water from the Piper Pond, which would begin a long process to eventually remove the pond as, as the homes got built up around it. The pond itself became more of a problem with drainage, and this problem would persist over the next several decades. In 1923, two new Roque courts were added to Piper Park. Roque was an American variant of croquet played on a hard, smooth surface. It was a popular game in the first quarter of the 20th century. It was also an Olympic sport in 1904 during the Summer Games. By 1924, Clifton Shepard was nearing completion on Irving Park as well as Piper Park. There was an article that came out about Piper Park getting 11 light standards that were being installed with ornamental posts being placed in and among the shrubbery rather than out in the open and topped with a wren house on each one of them. Later that same year, he also began working on the Lila Arboretum. In 1925, four tennis courts were added to Irving Park and two were added to Piper Park. In 1926, Clifton Shepherd was contracted to plant more than 600 large maple trees and elm trees at Country Club Hills Development. Meanwhile, at Piper Park, it was becoming a very popular place to go, these new city parks. And in 1930, here's an ad for an egg rolling that was happening at Easter time that brought out hundreds of children. By 1932, Clifton Shepard had created even more improvements at Irving Park and received a lot of praise for the work. Later in April, the park improvements had been acknowledged as being significant for the city. He was highly regarded for his work at Piper Park as well, where it was stated in an article that under his supervision, Piper Park was created out of a mud pond and received a tremendous transformation. However, the City of Battle Creek Commission was facing budget shortfall during that year and ended up attempting to cut 25% of the Parks and Recreation budget, in which case Clifton Shepard decided to resign. In 1935, Edward Piper Jr. passed away at the age of 89. He was long remembered as the donor of Piper Park, as well as having been in the lumber industry and real estate development in the area. During the 1940s, there were intercourt tennis leagues between a variety of parks in Battle Creek, including Irving Park, Piper Park, Bailey Park, and several other neighborhoods, and they would compete against each other, playing at the various parks' tennis courts. In 1947, Clifton Shepard was again hired by the city of Battle Creek to serve as a consultant and planner for the landscaping and development of the parks, and he served in that capacity until the time of his death in 1951. At the time of his death, he was working on the plans for McCray Park and improvements for Bailey Park, as well as expansion plans for Irving Park and the new park that was near the Verona Dam. 
By the early 1950s, Piper Park was in need of some upgrades. A lot of the growth and vegetation had overtaken the grounds and it was regarded as a safety issue for children playing in the bushes. Perhaps the neglect had come during the World War II years with leaner budgets and less personnel available to maintain the park systems. But by 1954, there was a considerable upgrade that occurred and the park was cleared out of all the undergrowth. A large portion of the pond area was filled in in this improvement at the time. 1957, there's still ice skating occurring at Piper Park. However, it's no longer in the pond as that's been filled in, but the tennis courts were flooded by the city to create ice skating rinks. By 1962, there are still articles about tennis instruction during the summertime at Piper Park, as well as arts and crafts classes for children during July. In 1966, we see articles about downhill sledding occurring at Piper Park, probably due to the new cleared landscaping that occurred over the past decade, making this a popular sport on snowy days during the winter time, which is still a popular place to go sledding today. During the 1970s, Piper Park was still a very popular place to go to, just as it is today. In these photos here, taken from an article, you can see that there were a lot more trees at that time. But in 1975, the drainage problems in the center of the park, where the pond used to be, continued to be a marshy area during wet seasons. So the city park director began an improvement project to bring in a lot more dirt to level it out and assist with drainage. By 1977, there was more requirements Quest for parks improvements in the city of Battle Creek, including adding lighting to the tennis courts that were still at Piper Park, as well as adding a playground. In 1981, an invitation to bid on a play structure as well as landscaping at Piper Park was put out by the city's purchasing agent. By 1982, the city had finally settled on who was going to do the work. Following these years, a play structure was added to Piper Park, which has since been replaced by more modern equipment, which we'll get to in a moment. In the late 1980s, Piper Park became a popular location for skateboarders, and they included adding some wooden ramps that they had there in the park for a while. During the 1990s, there was a lot of desire to see Piper Park renovated and modernized, and the Parks and Recreation Department began holding workshops in 1999. Eventually, these meetings resulted in a new plan for Piper Park, which modernized the play area to what we know it as today. There are no longer any tennis courts or rope courts at Piper Park. There is a baseball field, a playground, and a large area to run around and play, as well as great walking paths, pavilions, much of which came about from these later renovations in 1999 through 2001. Today, Piper Park is still a great place for downhill sledding in the winter time, walking in the summertime, jogging at most any time of year, and occasionally you'll still see geese and waterfowl visiting the park, perhaps looking for the pond that no longer exists anymore but is still lingering in their memory from their migratory patterns. Well, that's going to do it for today's tour through the history of Piper Park. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked today's video, please take a minute, give me a like, leave me a comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.